Let's start. Okay. Uh, uh, hi, guys. Um, Uh, this is Ivan Krovikov. Uh, he is solution architect, uh, and he is working. Uh, he is working for Mirantis company. And Ksenia Prokofia is a product manager from a Wargaming. Yep. So uh, together we are going to tell you a little bit about our cloud journey, uh, what the Wargaming company is, uh, what was the cloud use case uh, before we started that journey, how we did, how we proceed the whole way what did we learn and achieved uh, while doing that project, and what are the next steps. So, Ksenia, please tell us a little bit about the company. Yes, uh, please, before we start, how many of you uh, play computer games? Rise up, up, thank oh. you. <laughs> Great, and uh, uh, who prefer console games? Just two, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, and, uh, so we have a die-hard auditory here. <laughs> nice, great. And which games do you prefer? Maybe any, any Warcraft. Oh, <laughs> nice. Uh, Dota, GTA, GTA, <laughs> Call of Duty, and uh, Fallout. Great. And uh, do you know about uh, game World of Tanks? Great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> after I told, our presentation, I told you we have a right audience here. <laughs> yeah. After our presentation, you could find me and maybe I could help you with uh, some free gold. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, I'm from Wargaming, and uh, Wargaming is a global gaming developer and publisher. Uh, you can see all figures on the slide, and uh, the most important thing to know that it we have a big team, we uh, create cool games, and we have lots of users worldwide. We deliver legendary games globally with passion. Uh, all you probably, uh, as you probably know, uh, the most famous games, uh, game is uh, World of Tanks. Uh, on the 12th of April, uh, this game project celebrated fifth anniversary uh, since it released in European and North American regions. GCOR um, has been a long-term wargaming partner, uh, supplying our IT infrastructure, of course. Uh, our cooperation with GCOR began uh, with a shift uh, to online gaming with the World of Tanks release. Uh, we chose GCore because the company was able to meet our current service needs and uh, well as supply a solid foundation for future growth uh, and uh, our global presence. Right. As you can see on the slide, the process of infrastructure allocation are really complicated and the uh, technology stack is huge and mostly based on open source components. Uh, where uh, there are four main steps uh, to the product uh, go from developers uh, to a gamer. Staging, uh, staging trunk, sorry. <laughs> uh, this is a development and a QA environment. Uh, they require, request uh, the personal virtualized environments uh, to test and debug uh, the code. Debug the code, sorry. Um, That's okay. Nice, thank you. <laughs> Staging stable. Uh, while preparing to the new uh, release, uh, DevOps team requests uh, and uh, configures new virtual environments to deploy uh, um, and execute uh, a set of automatic test against the application. The third is a production test. Uh, included super test and common test. It's real players, uh, but uh, just the focus groups. Uh, all environments uh, required by uh, development engineers. Uh, and uh, it's uh, like the closed public beta testing. And production. Uh, uh, <laughs> DevOps uh, teams uh, required environment um, 
and uh, configures new virtual environment. Uh, work team uh, interaction is based on Jira issues. Uh, in order to get a new uh, virtual machine, it's necessary uh, to create two different issues, and it usually takes uh, three or more work days uh, in total to resolve it. Uh, this is a too long and difficult way, including the human factor and uh, different errors. Some of uh, our services were still running on uh, bare metal uh, hardware and uh, added even more com complexity. Why cloud? Um, for wargaming, it, uh, gives up, uh, it gives us opportunity to find a better service to our players uh, with the possibility to quickly increase or decrease um, uh, server capacity and different, in different regions or during different time of the day. Um, we are able to fulfill the demands of uh, fluctuating requirements. It also allows us uh, to better structure our costs. We pay for the capacity we use, uh, not the service we rent. Wargaming uh, has engaged Mirantis <laughs> to implement a cloud solution based uh, the Mirantis OpenStack early. <laughs> um, to ease our current um, pay points uh, and uh, offer a flexible solution to our online presence team uh, cost effectively uh, and uh, without compromising on uh, performance in sc and scale. There are two business goals which are most important for us. The first, uh, it's <laughs> to reduce <laughs> No, it's okay. Thank you. Uh, it's uh, the first uh, is uh, to reduce the cost with uh, Mirantis OpenStack and uh, increasing infrastructure utilization, of course. And the second is uh, to reduce uh, time to production by uh, by using API and automation for manual operations. For use cases, we have taken uh, as a basis. Uh, a four steps workload uh, life cycle. Staging trunk, staging uh, stable, uh, production test, and production. Uh, last two phases imply uh, working with real players and real users. Now, <laughs> now even tell us how the Mirantis uh, team has helped us in this. Thanks, Xenia. I personally also play. Uh, World of Tanks and World of World War, War Planes from time to time, so it was quite an interesting experience for me to work with the team and have a quick glance into how do these games uh, actually being developed. Uh, well, from OpenStack, from Mirandis OpenStack perspective, this project uh, was a good sample of uh, how we see uh, OpenStack projects should be done. So we have all, all the main phases here. Uh, first, uh, uh, we assessed uh, what are the actual goals. Uh, we prepare uh, the content uh, in the modular and repeatable way, roll down the clouds, and now are helping the team uh, to operate it and plan the next steps. Let me dig deeper into each of these phases. So, uh, at the very beginning of the project, hmm, frankly speaking, uh, the requirements were, uh, were Mm, quite kind of unclear. So uh, instead of just answering uh, the initial technical requirements, we uh, empowered the Xenia team with our architects, uh, sat down and started thinking uh, what are the actual business cases, what are the uh, detailed technical requirements behind it. So uh, after it, it was in a form of workshop, we collected the priorities, gathered all the requirements, and helped the guys to understand and map it to the actual OpenStack capabilities. Thus, we locked down the MVP uh, and proceeded further, um, uh, preparing a number of documents. You can see some diagrams from these documents on the slide. 
going all the way deep down from the use cases uh, through the overall project architecture and uh, the deployment architecture down to actual racking diagrams and networking diagrams, both for MVP and for some suggestions how to do the next steps after, um, afterwards. Uh, when uh, the project scope was agreed and finalized after this activity, we proceeded to development phase. As, uh, it was based on uh, Mirantis OpenStack, it was using Fuel. It allowed us to uh, do all the customizations, there was a number of, uh, in a modular way uh, before the actual deployment. So uh, we started out with We'll detail what are the, the exact requirements for each of the plugins to be developed, uh, put out our own lab, lab environment, uh, written down the code, uh, prepared the QA processes and policies for that, and uh, also prepared all the quality assurance uh, assets needed to uh, hand over the solution after its rollout. Uh, actually, four uh, main fuel plugins were developed in this phase. Uh, one of them one, uh, was uh, Active Directory uh, integration for authentication backend. Uh, the uh, Wargaming team is mainly using NFS uh, for their storage backend. So we also prepared a plugin uh, to use NFS both for ephemeral, uh, for, uh, for uh, volume, and for images. Uh, for uh, for uh, volumes, we used a remote FS uh, uh, center driver here. There also was a need to disable anti-spoofing rules as some of the VMs are used uh, as a hosts uh, for containers, uh, thus multiple IPs per VM were needed. Uh, so we also, we also uh, made a plugin disable anti-spoofing anti rules both in Nova and Neutron in this case. And the last one was the integration with external puppet masters. So, uh, the Puppet server built into Fuel was used for initial de deployment, and afterwards the environment was integrated with the uh, configuration management system uh, for the rest of its life cycle on Wargaming premises. When all the content was ready and we agreed on the test plans, on demo scenarios with the guys, we started the actual rollout. It was also made in a phased approach here. Uh, first of all, uh, it was a pilot cloud. Uh, uh, it's, it's now used as an internal sandbox. <coughs> we, we went all the way down from hardware preparation to the actual rollout, uh, internal QA, then it was handed out to Marine support and our gaming team uh, started using it, providing us with some valuable feedback. Based on these feedbacks and the number of changes we, we, we made and the scope was finalized. Uh, as uh, it was done in a modular way, and all the customizations were made in the field plugins, actual cl uh, remaining clouds rollout didn't take much time, as you can see here. It was roughly 10 days per cloud uh, for the whole life cycle, starting from a bare hardware uh, up to uh, handover, all documented uh, and uh, quality assured. So that was the build phase. Uh, while building it, uh, uh, that uh, results here. So as you can see, there was four clouds deployed. One is now used for internal sandbox. The one, the one which initially rolled out as a pilot, a pilot one. One is used for staging, and two of the clouds are used as uh, productions. Uh, all of them are MV were initially uh, deployed as MVPs. As you can see, the site is not that large. Now the workloads are being migrated and, the, and these clouds are being scaled out. We'll cover it a bit later. From the architectural perspective, uh, it looks quite similar to the reference architecture with a set of plugins on top of it. Uh, open vSwitch and provider networks were used for Neutron. And what's really pleasing for me, uh, uh, while the, the clouds were being deployed, uh, Wargaming team by itself uh, prepared their own Murano application to integrate with their uh, configuration management database. Uh, there is a set of policies how uh, hosts should be named, what kind of IPs uh, should they use, uh, 
So these policies were enforced by Moron application, and then after the instance has been deployed, they are registered in the database as well. In order to, <coughs> to get it up and running on time, we also added training uh, model to the actual deployment. It was a custom training uh, based on uh, our existing offerings. One is focused on vanilla OpenStack, covering its architectural overview, what's under the hood, how does actual provisioning workflow run, uh, look like, how to troubleshoot it, when, what to look for, what config lights uh, help guys to change some things afterwards. And so we also added a model uh, for uh, Mirage's OpenStack add-ons, so mostly for Fuel and Murano here. Uh, that's covering all the components which were deployed uh, during this uh, deployment. Uh, as uh, I've uh, put some diagrams from the actual training slides. Here, as you can see, they are quite deeply technical, so I personally have no doubt that the guys are now perfectly ready to run their own environment. All these our um, administrators are uh, knowing and uh, know very good now. <laughs> yeah, <coughs> yeah. Uh, we are still working okay. uh, with the team as now we, uh, we are into the operations phase, into the sustain phase. And uh, based on the actual tickets we have and the actual interactions we have right now, the command is, is really pretty well enabled and they know what, uh, what are they doing with OpenStack and how to make some, sense, some business sense out of it. Uh, well, talking about sustain, there are, there are also three comp main components here. Uh, the actual distribution, the actual uh, Mirandis OpenStack is being covered by uh, support subscription, both for uh, packages, for architecture, for uh, some um, networking team plans and small customizations here. Uh, plugins are also covered by the maintenance. <coughs> so, uh, using the same workflow, uh, we also help uh, to maintain uh, these plugins while rolling out maintenance upgrade on the main system. And we're also considering an upgrade uh, later this year. So uh, that was basically uh, how the project looked like from the technological perspective. And, but what are the actual results? Yep, thank you. Um, are our goals being reached as a result? Uh, I think yes. There are four different clouds, uh, clouds in different locations, um, and uh, the cloud platform is ready now. Uh, our administrators are ready uh, to work with OpenStack, and they already working with it. <laughs> For me, it's really great. <laughs> I saw your trainings. It's it's very difficult material. Well. Uh, and uh, at, um, at the moment, we are transition, uh, transitioning uh, non-gaming services, non-gaming non workloads to the OpenStack. Uh, at uh, all production up, um, test environment, uh, all production test applications, uh, such as a portal, forum, uh, payment service and other services, but now just for the one, uh, our game project, which named uh, World of uh, Warplanes, yes, are uh, already working in OpenStack Cloud. It's, it's a great tool. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, we have started to collect the data for the capacity management. It's, it's really great. Yeah, Again? yeah. <laughs> it, it was actually one of the reasons to give some uh, transparency uh, between Wargaming and NGCore, uh, how our resources actually used by which team. So it's, this data is already gathering, being gathered right now. Okay. Uh, which lessons learned uh, we have uh, and we studied? Uh, lesson first. Lesson first is pretty obvious. It was uh, told many times during these days. I've heard it in a number of presentations uh, so far. It's uh, just 
the one shouldn't treat open stack as a vCenter. It's uh, not a it, it isn't a direct replacement. It's more of paradigm sh shift. So uh, you can just uh, replace the technology uh, with uh, while staying uh, remaining all the processes and uh, all the cultural interaction between the teams here. Uh, Lesson? Well, uh, we don't have any feature party uh, so far. And if you uh, are onboarding your existing enterprise workloads, your uh, workloads uh, uh, which need some nurturing and which uh, are uh, to be preserved and scaled up, there are still some shortcomings to be addressed, and I've seen some blueprints uh, addressing them in the upcoming release, such as, for instance, uh, live migration, massive live migration, KVM, uh, which might still cause some issues uh, if you do it in a, in a large scale. Or uh, uh, one of the things which is not obvious for uh, uh, people with VMware background is you can just uh, scale your instance up without, without any giant time. As from OpenStack perspective, scaling up an instance is not just a, a use case of cold migration. You stop it and then scale it up. So uh, it, it definitely needs uh, some time to adopt. And the second case? Uh, uh, the second, the second lesson, uh, be prepared to revise your business processes. Uh, if you have a plan uh, for start the same project, uh, you should be ready to revise your business processes, of course. And if you have the docu documented uh, processes uh, with all information about people and technologies, it will be very helpful for, for the start, of course. Uh, but, uh, sorry, because uh, it will be the foundation uh, of your requirements. Uh, lesson third? Sure. sure. Lesson third uh, the, was a good news for us. So we had one more chance to understand that pluggable cloud architecture is the right way to deploy OpenStack. As we have uh, four different clouds to be rolled out, it, it, it will be really tough to implement the same things uh, in quite similar but uh, not equal environments. At the same time, from uh, each time from the scratch, so uh, some amount of time and money spent for to make it in a modular way, in a field plugin way, actually saved us a lot of time uh, while rolling it out, and I expect uh, even more time to be saved uh, while maintaining and operating them, in terms of uh, scaling out, in terms of pro uh, upgrades, uh, which we are considering later this year. Uh, when you have these uh, customizations localized in a modular way, it eases up your life quite a lot. And the last lesson? And the last lesson, uh, plan operational readiness beforehand. Uh, it's very important to involve the maximum of business users in this project. The Mirantis team helped us uh, with this case uh, and our uh, development engineers were involved in this project uh, uh, in the development process. Yeah, they even written down their own <laughs> run applications, actually. Yes. Really great. <laughs> they created connectors to our corporate systems. And... Uh, oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry? Hmm? Oh. <laughs> That's it? fine. Let me do it from here. Yeah. Uh-huh. And... Um, this whole project was just a first step before the great way. Uh, for, um, now we are considering the several nearest steps. Uh, firstly, we will continue to transfer uh, our bare metal workloads uh, to the OpenStack clouds. Uh, it will help us uh, to free up uh, uh, more uh, hardware uh, which will be uh, added to our cloud, uh, thus scaling them out. Uh, we are also planning to upgrade our clouds to Mitaka this year. Uh, at additional, at adi in addition to that, uh, we have started to work uh, more closely with our internal uh, product teams 
uh, to plan extra features needed by the cloud end users. Uh, based on their feedback, we are going toward uh, more networking services, uh, like uh, load balancing as a service, yes, and uh, DNS as a service too. Uh, and uh, test some pass features required our big data and development teams like DBA as a services and, and head of the service, yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, that was uh, the description of the, uh, the story. I want to thank Xenia. Thank you, Ivan. Uh, and uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs> we are more, uh, you are more than welcome to ask any questions on this case, and we'll be happy to answer. From a con slice content perspective, we are done. <laughs> Any questions so far? Uh, did I understand you correctly? You said that you currently have your forums and website running on OpenStack, but the only game you have running on it is World of Warplanes. Is that right? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. But it's uh, the start. It's like the pilot uh, of. Uh, our project, mm -hmm. and of course, we are planning to, uh, uh, to, to transfer to, to roll it uh, out to other applications other game as well, services yeah. and uh, services uh, from other games to the OpenStack, of course. But if you're playing uh, World of Warplanes, uh, you uh, could be sure that it really works on OpenStack. So you're basically already using OpenStack in this case. So did you guys have any performance issues or any other networking issues migrating everything to OpenStack or the, the servers were performing fine after the migration? Oh, well, some of the performance issues we stumbled into were uh, connected to that NFS backend for storage. It definitely needs some tuning. There is some work in the background to tune it but, uh, well in a better way. From CPU or memory perspective, everything's running fine. And as for uh, like a general networking, we've seen no issues so far. There are some with storage, but we, so we, we keep working on that. Okay, and another question. Did you guys migrate uh, any virtual machines from VMware or you basically recreated everything in the OpenStack cloud? Um. Yes, in the test environment. Uh, we have uh, some staging uh, virtual machines uh, in the VMware, of course, and uh, we uh, m maximizing maybe uh, all our staging. Uh, all our stagings, and of course, uh, with the new part, we use uh, uh, OpenStack and uh, some of them were migrated from VMware. So basically, from a technical perspective, uh, both, uh, uh, both use cases are being done right now. The majority of workloads, uh, well, the, 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 the large part of it is just being like, recreated as for new requests. Some of the ongoing VMs, which still need to be up and running, but we do not have a strict uptime requirement, such as the stage, staging loads are being converted and uploaded to KVM from VMware image. Thank you. Thank you, too. <laughs> More questions, guys? <laughs> no? Lucy. We're finished. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you then. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>